exclusive emotional review of the Ferrari Puro Sangue. Here was Thomas and Artegefühl for you in 4K full screen full length. Let's go with this first Ferrari four door and the first Ferrari SUV. It's not an SUV? Well, we're going to find out. Ferrari says it's not an SUV. Is it one? Well, it does compete with other luxury sports SUV like the Aston Martin DBX, Lamborghini Euros, the Bentley Ben Tiger, and maybe also with the Germans and Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT, BMW X5M, X6M, Audi RS Q8. Of course, this one here, among the most expensive ones, you have to pay yeah, around 400k or something euros or dollars for this one here. But is it worth it? And how good is it? Does it make sense to put a Ferrari higher? What about the interior? And of course, driving this V12, we'll find out. All right, everyone, launch control. Whoa, <laughs> the car lowered down. <laughs> that was 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Whew. Yeah, that was pure Ferrari. Ferrari. Already blown away. That was pure Ferrari emozioni. <laughs> we'll start here with the front. A very sensual one indeed. Beautiful design. They haven't put the hood too long actually to keep everything in check with the proportions. A V12 under the hood. Zoom more to that. But interesting already is that they put it behind the front axle to make it not a front engine concept but a front midship engine concept design wise here a thomas blue they picked that especially for me <laughs> they call it corsa blue actually and then this mesh grill here in the lower part carbon fiber use you can also go with a more subtle black styling if you like and they also paid attention to aerodynamics and this is kind of spectacular here for example so the air goes in here then goes to the engine and also flows out again so cooling the engine reducing pressure in the uh, in the engine compartment and so on so this is a very cool thing and it will continue all over the vehicle also when you go in here this is another aerodynamic thing air goes in here exits here again so both spectacular and functional i have now officially joined the order of the scuderia ferrari well, this is actually the key fob. <laughs> you can maybe also put it to the wall at home or something. These are the functions on the backside. And the length here is 4 meters 97 or 196 inches. So indeed, yeah, kind of for European purposes, full size. For American purposes, rather mid-size. Um, I mean, look at that. This silhouette is really, once again, so central. I think design-wise, really beautiful. And here you can also see... They said they don't want to exaggerate it with the length of the hood, that they can still keep the proportions. And also it's all about the weight distribution. They have 51% in the front, 49% in the rear, and this is almost ideal to have very good balance on the road indeed. And why are they coming with this concept right now, or not like five, six, ten years ago, when everyone was going in the SUV direction? Ferrari says, they don't follow trends and they don't bring to the market what the market is demanding. They bring to the market what they think at this moment is the best choice and what they can do on a technological level. And so they want to wait to put a car higher until they have enough technological systems ready to even out the disadvantages of it. So, for example, they have an active suspension built in here, four electric motors, one for each wheel that can even out. So when you're in a corner, it's, it goes upright like an anti-roll, anti-tilt control. Also, the whole system, the whole suspension is adaptive. It changes according to the driving modes, goes higher or lower, for example. And the whole ground clearance here is 18.5 centimeters or 7 inches and it can be lifted maximum up another 3 centimeters or 1 inch. There are two possibilities. A little bit lower, 2 centimeters only, if you just use the electric system. Optional also with hydraulic system and that can maintain this even higher ground clearance for a longer, kind of like infinite time and also to a higher speed of 80 kilometers an hour. So, you can also do some 
soft off-roading it, for example, and therefore also didn't have any anxiety going here in this snowy parking lot in the Italian Alps. Um, yeah, this actually was no problem because I know we will get out here again. Even more interesting details indeed. Well, I can get out of the snow here because this is also equipped with all-wheel drive. There's always this rear wheel bias and when it's going really fast, so fifth gear and more than 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, it's rear -wheel drive only, yes, but at slower speeds, considering, you can also directly power the front axle. So there's no mechanical link from rear to front axle, like, you know, with the differential there or something, but you have the engine directly connected to the front wheels with a separate shaft. Very interesting technology detail indeed. And well, you get power on the front axle, for example, when there is slip at the rear axle. So um, we'll see also in the driving part later on. Then also you can see here, this is kind of like a visual separation of the lower part of the car and here the higher part. And they have actually put a separate patent on this one because they say visually it's unique and it's also serving once again an aerodynamic purpose these carbon fiber wheel arches here by the way this is an option you can also have it just in pure black it depends on how loud the car should be from the design details wheels in the front is 22 inch we'll soon see the rear which is 23 inch and we can already see here the carbon fiber ceramic brakes these here are actually standard the famous three-quarter rear perspective. Wow, so sculptural. Slim tail lamps right here. And interesting, once again, technology-wise, this is equipped with rear axis steering. It means that the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels, up to three degrees, but only at slow speeds, like 30 kilometers an hour, 20 miles an hour. For higher speeds, then it goes rather in the parallel direction than the front with the front wheels to give you more stability. You can also see the turning indicators and there you can also see this really strong hip area by the way it has no rear wiper and once again it has to do with aerodynamics and the wind goes in here or the air goes in here and then they say it has such a strong wind effect that it cleans the rear glass if that's true well i think we have to go in to test it in the rain as well and of course this exhaust look at that yeah four pipes and i asked them actually why is it not electric because Ultimately, Ferrari will also present electric vehicles if they still want to continue selling something in Europe after 2035. Well, they say, of course, they will present an electric model, but this one so far, they were already daring this approach with four-door and also putting a Ferrari higher. So this was then basically enough for now. And of course, the main reason why not going electric yet is this. <laughs> When you see this batch here, especially when you drive around here in Italy, it is a special experience indeed. And <laughs> it hardly happens, but of course, when you are driving with such a vehicle here, in some countries, and depending on where you drive, you can say, like, I know these are like these snobs driving, and you know, maybe you gain a little bit more hatred or something. But here, driving a Ferrari in Italy, it's really amazing. I have had actually garbage trucks, you know, when, when you face them in the road, the road is too narrow, usually the smaller vehicle waits, turns something and you let the truck pass. That's how I do it. But before I could do something, the garbage truck was going reverse and like, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so they take, you know, like so much respect and, and love for the brand here in Italy. And also we took a very calm reviewing spot here, but we sometimes have problems when people just stop here in the middle of the road and just like, Stand and they keep the engine running and then we have to cancel the, the audio recording. So everyone is looking at the vehicle, making a free way. You have basically like a like a free ticket for everything. Doing not sure what the police will say, but so when I meet the police, I'm gonna come on, we will take a ride. Maybe I'll have a free ticket then as well. <laughs> Roof is standard in carbon fire. Fire? <laughs> Roof is in carbon fiber, of course, as standard, but it's still painted black then. Interesting. But I asked them, and by specific order, you can maybe also get the carbon fiber look, but it's actually, you know, not intended. But this one here is equipped with the optional electrochromic roof, and this is then good for leaving light in or out with this electric function. And now, what we have here is a 6.5 liter V12 
with 725 horsepower, naturally aspirated. <laughs> yeah, and this is also, of course, one of the unique selling points of this vehicle. Acceleration figures is 3.3 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and 10.6 seconds to 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. There are hardly any vehicles that are quicker than this one. And also, if you think like, you know, performance luxury SUVs. Yeah, that one is quicker indeed. Um, yeah, but Ferrari will also go electric uh, <laughs> at some point. But that's not the point of this car. This is here about all the emozioni that you have with this one here. And yeah, visually, definitely already a beauty more super interesting features and first timers for ferrari to follow now in the interior then here the front door you open just like this the manual thing but also first time for ferrari is they offer a soft close right here and you can also see frameless windows here with dual insulation glass and the front door from the inside here once again you have carbon fiber use and some microfiber then here in the lower part. First look at this cockpit here with the steering wheel, big shifting pedals here that are attached to the column behind it. Standard Ferrari. Start-stop engine is here in the front and also illuminated. I would have preferred a real physical start-stop button, I have to say. But before we continue with more deals in the front, let me show you one of the highlights of the vehicle. And these are special doors look at that first of all there's the manual function when i just pull it shortly suicide doors and then i manually move them but with the help of an electric motor so it's not too heavy once again also soft close for the rear doors and when i pull it a little bit longer then there's the fully electric opening like this show effect wow and why did they do that they attached it here at the rear that you can access the rear easier. At the same time, a lot of suicide door cars, they have no B pillar. This one does have one for stability reasons because they say the sportiness and rigidity of the vehicle, that's more important to us than anything else. No special show effect. Yeah, it is also still a show effect, no doubt. And once again, the advantage is that you can easier access the rear. Two single seat setup. The question is, do I also you want to see it first? <laughs> yeah, there we, there we go. Single seat setup for the rear. Split in the middle then. You have the window controls there in the middle, for example, and also individual electric control right here. And is it really hard to get in the rear here with the suicide doors now? Let me see. Yeah, it's actually quite good. Of course, this area is also quite cramped and yeah, this Ferrari is suitable for four tall adults indeed so this is the seat is i would be driving with 189 or 642 and this leaves some leg room and headroom wise yeah to the side it gets close but it works actually it works yeah um the seat in comfort the seat itself is really stiff actually you can move it back a little bit um or adjust the angle that's also possible so or you can move a little bit forward then you can put it a little bit more like this electric motors are quite kind of loud but yeah overall i would say space wise it fits easily is it super comfortable yeah i think the surface the seating surface is kind of stiff it will be better when you have the standard alcantara equipment because also for the front seat here standard would be that you have alcantara in the middle and that is a special new alcantara which also has two-thirds of recycling share so already going in this direction and ferrari is also working on a completely animal free interior but not possible at least yet seating in the front it is of course sporty as you would expect from ferrari then of course a little bit higher and I think a lot of Ferrari customers will be interested in that because it just gives you more comfort. At the same time, the technology features even out than the disadvantages of putting the car higher. So indeed, it is the most comfortable Ferrari indeed. However, the seating surface is still kind of stiff. So you get this sportiness feeling 
and there will be competitors which are more comfortable in the seating yes but then once again when you go for the Alcantara it also adds a little bit more comfort here in the front by the way as for the height it's no problem indeed so I have enough space and also here to move around so um, yeah that's actually fine as for the offering in the front and should you wonder yes because of this B pillar split you can indeed first close the front door and after that close the rear door so that is possible no problem at all you will not break the car with this there we go goodbye <laughs> wait we're not finished yet interior cockpit overview wow look at that and they have also unique solutions for that for example you see there's no middle screen you have the screen here as digital instruments and also for carbon and android auto soon going to show you that indeed then the steering wheel here, very sporty control, the huge pedals, turning indicators are on the steering wheel here. And then here you have the drive mode selector, soon going in depth on that. And on the middle part here, there is a unit you can fold out and then you actually control the climate. And the screen is actually then here on the right side. This is a touch screen for the passenger. From my driver's view, I, can, I cannot see it um, when you have like this angle view to it but here from the front then you can probably see it as a passenger and it mirrors everything and you can also have your own control center then as a passenger here detail look here at this unit that goes up it's very interesting right unit in unit out <laughs> Homer Simpson style here once again the temperature and then you can have more controls uh, in here for example then here the vent strength and uh, you click here and then you can choose things for individual seats um, so I'm not sure if I would do that while driving uh, that's doubtful I think but I think for the climate unit that you still have this is great for the other things uh, I'm not sure it's not that intuitive to use or what do you think and on the left and right side there are still some separate controls I'm sorry Michelle I'm, diff I'm confusing you for example here you can um, uh, activate the seat controls and then in the middle part once again you can activate you know the seat heating like this or seat cooling for example and on left side yeah, also one of my favorite features here in the winter the heated steering wheel for the rear climate unit by the way you have the same mechanism you draw it out and you can also here um, switch temperature and also seat control and so on so it's the same logic lower middle console inductive charging pad and then yeah this is like a fingerprint and scratch magnet here this is then the front cup holder you also have uh, cup holders in the rear by the way and then this is a very interesting element here for the reverse gear put in like this then for automatic versus manual shifting and L is for the launch control which is also a cool thing because it lowers the car basically and the window controls are here left and right side of this console my favorite switch here on the steering wheel this is how you control the driving modes like ice wet comfort and sport and ESC off and when you press yeah all attention and when you press it then you can also change the suspension settings like hard soft and medium in the sporty modes or in the other modes um, just between two modes so this is how you can easily switch things while driving here by the way if you are searching for it this is the volume jog behind the steering wheel and these digital instruments are also your screen on the driver's side and then you can for example get to all the vehicle settings right here for example you control it from the steering wheel or this is then also your access to the apple carplay or android auto very interesting and whoa when you look, look at that for the first time you're like really i mean the integration like this at the moment they say it's not possible otherwise um, so Ferrari said that's the restriction by Apple actually they couldn't do it in, a, in any other way it doesn't look that good the integration but it's also cool to have it in your line of sight then this map and then you can also with a hotkey switch back and forth between this and this view actually and of course the most interesting thing is always you turn it like this brum, brum. but the thing is really with these controls here at the steering wheel you you hear this clicking sound you also have this kind of like this stamping in here that you feel that you are controlling this cross and also here for switching the view but uh, it doesn't feel that premium and sometimes uh, they also suddenly disappear and you can't do anything anymore and you also get a small head-up display yeah 
21 speaker Burmester sound system with a very cool pure sound indeed. This is also the focus of Burmester by the way, so they don't focus too much on bass intensive or super surround. They more want to transport an authentic feeling for the sound and it works very well here in this vehicle. So a very cool sound system indeed. And how did that actually happen? They invested a lot of work. They had to go to Ferrari because they don't have too many vehicles to supply that. Hey, here's the vehicle and test your sound on it. So the Bormester guys had to go to Ferrari and do their, all their sound system, like measuring like the length and so on and audio measuring inside and spent weeks there to adapt this system specifically for this vehicle. The trunk now, it's very important here as well, 470 liters and the width a meter or 40 inches, so well usable. And the standard length here is 77 centimeters or 30 inches. Also the height is of course notable right here at yeah about 60 centimeters or 24 inches and you can see here luggage for you know like maybe two or even more is no problem at all underneath here we have even more space just a little bit like this and this is also the key of using this for the full potential you can remove this here actually then you can put this one also underneath and then there is this split right here and I never would have imagined that I'm working in the trunk of a Ferrari actually. Then here this one can be stored underneath as well. Um, yeah you have to do some Tetris here that it yeah um, let's go with this first. Yes this is a Ferrari review. I'm not kidding. Um, yeah uh, maybe like Yes, I made it. So here I stored both of these, um, you know, splitters then right here underneath. Then I have a clean solution. And then I can also here fold the seats like here. And then indeed, yeah, this is also a special thing than electric folding seats. It takes a while, you see, but I can already prepare my measuring stick of the full length of the trunk. Indeed, not only outer grid and full length, but also Ferrari into the front seats. It is 1 meter 70 or 67 inches. So I think this will lead to some using their Ferraris for even more purposes now. All right, guys, Ferrari puro sangue means like from a horse, pure blood. That's the meaning for that. And let's put to the sports mode and use this shifting pedal here and <laughs> oh. whoa yeah shifting pedals that's the thing you maybe also see here the uh, um, the red line indicator and top of the steering wheel definitely formula one alike wow great handling and naturally aspirated v12 that means i have a linear power curve it's not that i would get like a like a turbo boost or something it's really more this sonorous low frequency thing and also so natural how the power is evolving so i really love naturally aspirated engines ah, and even if you if you're maybe in the higher gear or something it's just a beautiful acceleration experience indeed because again, it doesn't feel like this, you know, turbo exclusive thing. <sighs> Whoa, that is something. I mean, yeah, we've seen in the interior, there were some parts where I think like, wait a minute, I'm paying 4,000 euros for this vehicle, or like 380 would be the end price in Germany, for example. And I can maybe like individualize it for another 120K. So maybe half a million if, you pay the most expensive one and then you have something that is like this high gloss back there really but then this one here yeah this is what is making up for it so when you want to get such a vehicle it's not that you would buy the best car and it's not that you would buy perfection you buy this here and just when you shift down yeah, you immediately are in a, you know, maybe in a, in a racing game or in Formula One yourself. 
So yeah, these jeans are really transport and also here to the Puro Sangue. And one of the main factors here is, or main questions, is it an SUV or not? And yeah, you sit higher, definitely. And when you put it here to comfort mode, and also when you are in a higher, yeah, higher gear or something, it can be a very relaxing vehicle, you know? So you wouldn't expect that actually. So the suspension is surprisingly comfortable, especially in the comfort mode. It's really relaxing and silent. So it can also be something for travels, for example. But as soon as you shift down and maybe go to the sports mode, you can let it all out and it becomes a completely different vehicle indeed. Steering is pretty precise actually. Uh, from a Ferrari I would actually expect a little bit more resistance so that it feels a little bit a um, little bit racier. I would actually wish for a little bit more resistance here when I turn but overall very well to control and it has a great size, you have a great grip so you feel very much in control of that vehicle. By the way, if you want no one to interfere with your shifting, I mean, you can always use the shifting pedals also in the auto mode, but when, when I go back here to the M mode, then it's really totally up to me and there's also no upshifting from the vehicle or so. And I can keep it easier also than in the lower gears. Wow. Yeah, this is really an amazing experience. And to me, the most surprising thing is actually how smooth the car is, actually. So this was the thing, um, actually, that Michael Schumacher brought to Ferrari, that he actually said that a softer suspension setup is, in many cases, the better and even the racier choice. So when you think about, you know, customization and tuning, it's always like, yeah, that make that car sportier put that super stiff suspension in there and that's so cool racing and everyone driving like bop, 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 bop. But that's not even good for all racetracks. Also, for example, for Nürburgring notch life because of the height difference, topography changes, it's actually better when a suspension is softer and can adapt. It's a very interesting fact. And here, you can make it also stiffer. You know, when you press it here, then you can go switch, for example, here in sport mode, medium, soft and hard. Um, there are significant differences indeed. So here, for example, in hard now, the road is quite even. Let's go directly to soft. And we feel that the car is just a little bit smoother, but more you feel it when you drive over bumps. But in all settings, actually, the car is surprisingly comfortable. I think it's the right choice for this vehicle to make it the most comfortable Ferrari. That's why people would actually take this one over the super sports cars. At the same time, you get this typical Ferrari sound and the supercar experience. And although it is higher, it does not lean to the sides. So this active suspension with the individual electric motors keep the car upright so you don't have this leaning effect into the corners. And that's not only a sporty thing, but also actually something ah, beautiful accelerating out, but also something for comfort because also you know your co-drivers you're right yeah michelle's the cool it's like always like on the racetrack somewhere 250 kilometers on like he's like yo what's up guys <laughs> he's also called iron stomach michelle <laughs> and yeah the thing is but really when you have um less g-forces there when you keep the car upright basically well you can't eliminate g-force but you mean you even it out but you keep the car upright that also adds to comfort indeed and I really like it so the smoothness of the drive is so awesome I really love that so actually two things the smoothness of the ride and also the naturally aspirated engine if it's now a 12 cylinder or not that wouldn't be the most important thing to me you know it can also be an 8 cylinder maybe even a 6 cylinder I don't know that wouldn't be the crucial thing you know I don't feel I have to, you know, show off to my friends by the cylinder count I have. Cool thing is that you have power and you have this naturally aspirated power curve with... Whoa! <laughs> wow! How did that come? Where did that come, come from, actually? That must have been like a, like a hidden icy spot on the road, right? I, I mean, I didn't even accelerate. But that was a good thing, you know, when you have some uh, experience 
on uh, you know on ice lake that you just you know by heart immediately know how to react and don't have to think the problem is when you start thinking that might be a problem wow and that was not even with ec off you know so with this car i would not recommend ec off on public roads that's definitely too dangerous yeah but i mean here up in the mountains there can be some surprising spots here very interesting the um, rear axle steering by the way is rather something that helps you parking in and out and in very tight corners because at higher speeds it already goes in the parallel direction but still it is true that by these technological systems it's not that you would say hey this is a higher setting ferrari and it does not deliver the typical ferrari experience it does deliver definitely and how yeah it, in a really awesome way so really in the interior part i said there were some things you know, also controlling like the google maps sometimes you have everything on your smartphone but then you plug it in and then it doesn't work anymore and it has no backup there it doesn't have in car internal gps you know which is to me a good decision actually because they say google and apple are better anyway and that that's true more manufacturers should do it but somehow um i don't know sometimes the software uh, doesn't really catch up then and i don't know when you connect it then the the root guidance is gone so you can criticize something in the build quality and so on considering that price and so on but the thing is you still get is that super unique driving experience and that is something that also sets it apart from the competition. So there might be com some competitors which are maybe like better on paper or maybe even quicker or have this better, this better, this better. And they are also all unique. You know, these luxury brands are also the top sporty products from the, from the premium brands. But indeed, this one delivers a unique Ferrari driving experience. And it is this beautiful, like this pureness of the drive, some brutal aspect as well. And yeah, I mean, even when you're in higher gear and press it through, wow, it's just a wow experience indeed. And I, I can understand the emozioni from all the Ferra Ferraristis and also why people here uh, basically pay homage when they see this vehicle here. And that's also another um, interesting finding, definitely, that there is not this effect like, oh, this is not a proper Ferrari when people see that, you know. I don't know. Like the, the other brands, when they switch to their SUVs, people maybe first thought, yeah, is that really like true to the brand and so on. Um, yeah, that, this one in red. <laughs> it also looks nice, right? But I love the blue one. Yeah, I was asking that before, would you go always red Ferrari? Yellow is also, in a way, typical Ferrari. It was also, you know, starting very, very early. But the blue color here is also something pretty special, isn't it? Any downsides of the drive? I mean, the seats are pretty stiff as for the bolstering. Yeah, the Alcantara will make it a little bit but still, there will be more comfortable competitors. But this one here, if you compare, especially to the um, SUV competitors, is it now an SUV? I would say, rather not i wouldn't not not completely say like no not at all but i say i'd say rather not i would rather say it's a crossover you know it fulfills the purpose in a way of an suv like with the competitors but it sits a little bit lower and that's why it also keeps this rather unique position so basically being between these supercars and the suvs they're right in the middle that's where the Ferrari Puro Sangue is situated and that's actually a very intelligent approach. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, but I think this is the kind of review where you don't have to be sorry for that. Definitely also tune in to one of the competitors like the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga.